Hi there, this is Mar Haddad here again. So uh, in this lecture, I'm going to start building up the ISP. So at this moment, I do not have any configuration. We're going to use five routers for, actually four routers for the core. One router, which is the ISP, this one that is providing us the internet. We have four routers in our core ISP, and then we can distribute internet to our customers. So we have to start configuring everything from scratch. Now, the first thing that we have to think of is that we need to do BGP peer with our ISP and we have to publish to them our public IP addresses. So that means all the world would know about our IP addresses, the public IP addresses. And we should get the route from the BGP from the ISP. So that's what we are going to do in uh, this lab. We have a lab of 10 points. Before I start doing those points, let me just go and show you what is the scenario that we are going to work on through all this course. And then I will come back to the points to start doing the BGP between the ISP router and my uh, uh, edge router, which is called router2. So this is my scenario. This is my ISP. What you see here, all those routers, router2, 3, 4, and 5, those are the ISP routers. So this is my ISP. Now, what I want at the end, that uh, this router, which is for a customer, and uh, that this router as well for a customer to be able to go to the internet from my core network. Now, the first thing that we have to think of is to make BGP peer with the ISP. So this is an ISP router and it is connected to the internet. It has a BGP um, autonomous system number. Then we need to make peer with them. And then we have to tell them that we have public IPs. Then you have public IP yourself. You have to advertise your public IP or publish them to the internet. So then you send them to the ISP. So all the world knows that in case anyone wants to reach to any of those public IPs that my ISP has, then they should come from that side. So that means we need to make the BGP peer between those two routers. We have to publish the uh, public IPs. And of course, we should ask to the ISP to not send us the whole BGP routes, which are something like 700,000 routes. So to not make our router uh, full of uh, uh, BGP routes, what we can ask the ISP to do is just to give us a default route on BGP. Then it's like one route on, because anyway, to go to the internet, we only have this way to go, right? So this is one ISP. So why should we really take all the routes of the internet? So what we can do, we can just ask them, put for us a uh, default route on BGP. So in my uh, lab now, I'm gonna focus on doing this router. Actually, we never have to work on the ISP router. That's something the ISP do it. But just because it's a lab now, I'm going to work on the ISP router to show you how the ISP normally configure their router. And then I'm going to start working on router two to make the BGP peer to publish the uh, uh, the uh, public IP address to the BGP. So this is what we're going to do in this first lab. Let's go now back to the points and start doing them. Point number one, set IP address on internet one of the ISP as per the graph. So let me just put the graph here and uh, let's go to the ISP router. Again, I do not have at all any configuration on any of those routers. So those seven routers that you see in front of you, we don't have any configuration. They have just blank configuration on it. So we have to configure now the IP addresses, which is something um, I think that you already know, but let's do it. So we go to the ISP router. Let's check. This is the ISP router. So I'm inside the ISP. Look to the name over here. Again, we never work on the ISP router, but just as it is a lab now, I'm going to work on it. So let's put an IP address on the ISP router. If we look to the picture, the IP address on the ISP router is on Ethernet 1, which is 192.168.12.1 slash 24. It is on the interface Ethernet 1. So this is the first point I need to do. Point number one is done. Point number two, create a bridge interface on the ISP router and put on it an IP of 8.8.8.8. .8 what does it mean here? Because I'm going to use a lab now, so we have to assume that this router, the ISP router, is connected to the internet. On this router, I do not have internet now. But what I'm going to do is just to make a bridge interface, put an IP 8.8.8.8, which we think that this is the internet. So once we do the configuration here, at the end, we have to ping to 8.8.8.8 .8 to see if we can reach it. If we reach it, then it's like we are connected to the internet. So I'm just going to create a bridge interface, which is a virtual interface, put on it that IP address to be able to make the test later. So we think that that's really the internet, which is 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. Let's do that. 
So we go to the bridge. I create a bridge interface and I will put in this bridge interface, the IP A.A.A .A 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 on the bridge interface. So now we do have IP on the Ethernet one and on the bridge interface. Point number two is done. Point number three, set IP address on Ethernet one of router two as on the graph and ping to the ISP router. So again, we are just doing now IP addresses. We go to router two, IP address, and we have to put the same range, which is 192.168.12.2. If we look to the graph, you can see it. So this is dot two slash 24, and it is on Ethernet one. And let's try to ping from router two to router one, 192.168.12.1. And uh, here we go. So we do have reachability between router two and the ISP router. Port number three is done. Now we need to start working on doing the BGP because we have reachability between the two routers on layer three. So we can do the BGP. Configure BGP on the ISP uh, and with an autonomous system number one and router ID 1.1.1.1. And then we have to do BGP peer to router two, which is on autonomous system two. So I'm going to do point four and point five together. So we have to assume that at this moment, this ISP is an autonomous system number one. And this uh, core network, which is my network, which is also another ISP, is autonomous system number two. Okay, so I'm just using the simple numbers because that's a lab. And we need to do the BGP peers between those two autonomous systems. So we go to router one which is the ISP router actually. And from here we have to go to routing and we go to BGP on the instance. I have to say that the autonomous system of the ISP router is one and it has a router ID. Router ID is nothing more like a representation of the router inside the BGP process. So the name of the router in the BGP process, if you want to think of it. So I'm just going to use for the ISP router 1.1.1.1. And now I'm going to make peer and this peer needs to be done with router two. So I have to say peer to router two. And what is the remote address? So that means the address of router two. It is 192.168.12.2. What is the remote on autonomous system of the router two? We said that it is inside autonomous system number two. So that's what I need to do from router ISP. Port number four and five are done. Port number six, go to router two and we have to do the BGP peer with the ISP router. So we have done the BGP peer from router, which is ISP. Now we have to do it from the uh, router two. So we go to router two and from here we have to go to routing BGP. Inside the instance, this router, which is router two, it's inside autonomous system two. I'm going to use this router ID 2.2.2.2. And it has to do peer with the ISP router, which is here. We can just say peer to ISP 192.168.12.1, which is inside the remote autonomous system here, number one. And then, okay, now we have to look here. It is still idle in a moment. We should be having established. So here we go. So now we see that the peer has been established. That is the BGP peer between my router, which is my edge router on my network and uh, the ISP router. And it has been established as now the peer on BGP has been established. We can now advertise our public IP. So think that you have received from IANA a public IP of slash 24. So you have to tell all the world that those public IPs are for you. Then you have to publish them to the ISP router. Point number six is done. Point number seven, configure the ISP router to give you a default route on BGP and check if router two has received the default route. So in case you are already now working on a real scenario, then once you do the BGP peer, and uh, if the ISP router doesn't do anything, then you will see that you receive the full BGP routes of the whole internet, something like 700,000 or maybe more uh, prefixes that you can get from the internet. So that means on your routing table over here, if you go to IP route on router two, you should receive here, you see that your routing table is full of prefixes that uh, are from the internet, which is something I highly advise that 
you speak to your um, uh, ISP router in case you only have a single home, like one link to the ISP router, just tell them that we don't want all those uh, prefixes to be received. We just want to receive a default route. Of course, now we uh, didn't get them because we are not really now uh, using real autonomous system, real BGP. So what we are doing now is just we're doing a lab. But in case in real scenario, you should see already that your routes are full from prefixes from BGP. So what you can do is to discuss with the IT engineer of the ISP, tell him that, you know what, I don't want the whole uh, prefixes to be received. Just give me a default route on uh, BGP. So how to do that? Now on router two, we don't see anything now. We can go to the ISP router. And the ISP router over here, which is the uh, engineer, should go on the peers. And inside the peers here, he should do default originate. You see that? Default originate. Let's move it a little bit. So on the default originate, he will say always or if installed. So always insert a default route to everyone or if installed, that means if I have a default route and install it to them. But I prefer to use always because that's anyway, this router is going to be the gateway for my whole core network. So that's what it needs to be done. Now you see that it went idle, then established. Now if I go to router two, look, I have received the default route and it is DAB, Dynamic Active BGP. So this default route is received from BGP. And now you can see that um, that's what, what I need. I don't want to receive all the prefixes from BGP. Only a default route is more than enough. Point number seven is done. Point number eight, ping from router two to a .a 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 .a. Is it reachable? Remember that we said that we have here a, a interface we call the bridge, which is a .a .a .a, which is like the internet. So now I want to check if this router is able to ping to a .a 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 .a. So it's able to go to the internet from BGP. So let's try to do that. We go to router two. And from here, we can go to tools, ping. And we can ping 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. And that's it. So start. Here we go. You see, I'm able to reach 8.8.8.8. .8 .8. Very good. So now the BGP is working. And uh, you see, we didn't have to do any NAT, anything that's BGP. So I'm able to reach to a .a 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 .8 from BGP. Point number eight is done. Point number nine. Now we need to publish the public IP address. So let's say that we have received from IANA public IP addresses. Here I have used 10.11.12.0. I know those are private IP addresses, but again, there is a lab. Let's assume that 10.11.12.0 are public IP addresses. So the number is not now very important. Let's assume that those are the public IP addresses. There are private IP addresses because I'm doing a lab now. So 10.11.12.0 slash 24 is my public IP address. So how to publish it? So let's to say to all the world, like, hey, guys, if anyone wants to reach to my public IP addresses, then I am here. They are on my autonomous system number two. So then all the world can reach it. All right. So to do that, we have to go to router two. We already have the peer on BGP with router one. So what I need to do now is to go to BGP again and on the network. So if I say here plus and I publish them, so I say 10.11.12.0 slash 24. So I just published them and I have synchronized here, checked. So I'm going to speak about synchronized in a moment. So if I just make them publish. So that means now I'm publishing those public IP addresses. I'm saying to the ISP router that those are my public IP addresses in PHP. Tell all the world about it. But if we look to the ISP router, he should not see them yet. So if we go to IP routes, you see, he doesn't know about them. There is a reason why. Uh, let me show you what is the reason. If we go back to router 2, once you make publishing for the public IP address, if you have the uh, this one synchronized is checked, then that means that those or this network should be in the routing table to be published. So if we look to the routing table, we don't see that this network is inside the routing table. So if we don't have this network inside the routing table, then it will not be published to the BGP. So we have to do one of the two things. Or 
we just take out synchronize. So that means even if it's not on the routing table, you can publish it. So let me show you. If I take out the synchronize and I say, okay, we go to the ISP router. Look, he can see them on BGP now. He see that this network is reachable from uh, his gateway, which is um, 12.2, which is router 2 on BGP. So that's one solution that you can do. So you don't have to click on synchronize. Now, in case you want to keep synchronized, now if I put synchronize, this would go away. So you see on router ISP, there is nothing. So if you want to put the synchronize, then in this case, you have to create what we call a black hole route. So because we said that if we have synchronized checked, then that means that uh, those uh, uh, or this network should be on the routing table. So I can just open here, make a route, and I say 10, 11, 12, 0, slash 24. But this route, the type is black hole. Black hole means it doesn't take you to anywhere. So just to have those networks inside the routing table, and then I will say here, okay. So you can see that this is a black hole. And uh, I just make it a black hole to be able to use the synchronize. I have synchronized now checked. Now, if I go to the ISP router, you see it is there. So that's uh, one of the two things. If you don't want to use the black hole on uh, the uh, routing table, just do not put synchronize. If you want to use the synchronize, create a route, which is black hole route, and then it will be advertised to the ISP router. Point number nine is done. And then uh, point number 10, check if the ISP uh, router uh, see uh, the IP range of the BGP in the routing table. And uh, we have seen that, yes, he can see them without any issue. So this is the first part of this uh, lab. We have already formed the BGP. We have uh, received a default route from BGP to the router to, to be able to go to the internet. And we have published our public IP addresses because those public IP addresses, I'm going to use them to provide them to my customers. So this is the first thing that we need to do. This is very simple, straightforward. Not a lot of things you need to do to be able to form the BGP peers and uh, to publish your public IP address and to receive the default route. Now, as this is done, we have to now start focusing on our core network. So we have to configure the core network to have OSPF. We have to create the VLANs inside the core network. So OSPF run on VLANs. And then uh, I'm going to configure on top of the OSPF MPLS to allow some uh, customers in case they want to uh, have, for example, like layer two connectivity uh, between each other. Like if they have two branches, how to do that. So, so that's something I'm going to show it in this course. So I hope that uh, this lecture was informative for you and I will see you in the upcoming lecture.